Hi, so this, uh, this is the third video. I'm going to wrap up this discussion about conditional statements in JavaScript and P5.js here. So we've looked so far at a conditional statement and what it's allowed us to do. It's allowed us to have something, um, uh, have the draw loop execute differently depending on something that's happening in the code, whether it's where the user's mouse is or where uh, a given shape is on the screen, it changes direction or it changes color. This, is, this has allowed us to create different paths and have the program do different things based on certain conditions that evaluate to either true or false. And this is the essential topic here, but there are a few additional features to the way that you can work with conditional logic that allow for other possibilities. And the first one that I want to show you is just the keyword else. So if you think about it, you could say, if it's very hot, you know, turn on the air conditioning. And I might add to that statement, if it's very hot, turn on the air conditioning, otherwise take a nap. Now, I don't know why this doesn't make any sense, but you get the idea, this idea of otherwise. Else is essentially that otherwise. So if I were to say something like if, this is what we're familiar with, if mouse x is greater than 200, if this evaluates to true, execute this code. And we know that if it's false, we don't execute the code that's in here. But what about in this other case of otherwise? Else gives us an otherwise. Else, do this other code. So we've now created this sort of like uh, sequence nested block. We have an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. And then, another, then an else and then another open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. So what I want to do is go find that previous example we made where, that I made where uh, if the mouse gets over to the right hand side of the screen, the, the circle turns purple. So now what I want to do is say like if it's on the right hand side of the screen, have it uh, draw a circle or if it's on, uh, change the shape. So I'm going to, based on if it's, the, the, I'm going to use an else. <laughs> that if it's on the right hand side of the screen, do this, otherwise do this other thing, okay? So this is where the else comes in. So let's look at that syntax now. Okay, over here. So we can see this bit of code right here. This is where our, um, this is where our uh, if statement is. And now I can add, I wanna add an else right here. So all I need to do to that is type else and add another open curly bracket. And actually you notice the editor itself just filled in that second curly bracket for me. So you can see if this is true, do this code. And basically what we're saying is if that's not true, do this other code. And so I'm, I, I could have kept with color, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this ellipse and put that here. And then I'm gonna here, I'm gonna say draw a rectangle. So now we can see, and I'm gonna zoom back out. We can see, do this, otherwise do that. So let's run this code. And we can see, okay, well right now the mouse is not greater than 300. So when it starts, we're actually, ex I'm at, the, the program's executing that otherwise statement. And as the mouse moves over, we've got the circle. So you can see that circle is turning into a square based on where the mouse is. We've got this conditional logic. Okay, now, there, there's more to this than that. So in addition to having an else, so one thing I should note here is a conditional statement, you can only ever have one if and one else. But there's something you can put in between there. If mouse x is greater than 200, execute this code. Now, I could say otherwise execute some other piece of code, but I'm gonna say something different. I'm gonna say otherwise if such and such. Else if mouse x is greater than 100, execute this bit of code. Else, if mouse x is greater than 50, execute this bit of code. In all other cases else, execute this bit of code. So these if statements can actually become this much longer piece of logic where you're testing a whole bunch of different conditions. A kind of classic example of this, it doesn't really apply to drawing in P5, but to sort of thinking of this logic is a, a program that grades somebody. So you could say, if the grade is greater than, an, if the grade is greater than 90, assign the letter grade A. Otherwise, if it's greater than 80, assign the letter grade B. Otherwise, if it's greater than 70, C, et cetera. So you can imagine there's a bunch of different conditions that we're testing, and you have to start with an if, you don't have to start with an else, but you can only have one other otherwise in all other cases, and you can have as many else ifs as you want in between. 
So again, the, this, this idea obviously makes a lot more sense in the context of a practical example. And we could look at testing like where the mouse is on the screen. Is it here or is it here or is it here or is it here? Uh, which one of these conditions is it met? So I want to actually put this in the code, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. This is actually correct. But I'm going to put, I'm going to start with mouse x greater than 50, then 100, then 200. I'm going to reverse this order, and it's not going to work. And I want to also discuss why, which is a sort of key aspect about how else if works. <laughs> this is a really tricky, interesting problem if you haven't seen this before. OK, so um, now I'm over here, and I'm going to add, so I'm going to start with, uh, uh, sorry, mouse. I really should have done color here, because now I have to like think of a lot more shapes. But it's fine. So if mouse x is greater than 50, a circle, else if mouse x is greater than 150, do a rectangle, else if mouse x is greater than 250, let's do a line. And you know what I'm going to do just because I'm, and then in all other cases, do a point, uh, 300, 200. Okay, so now we can see I've strung together this conditional logic, and I'm going to kind of Try to zoom into it a little bit to make it a little bigger here. You can see, OK, if the mouse is greater than 50, otherwise if it's greater than 150, otherwise if it's greater than 250, otherwise draw a point. So I should see either an ellipse, a rectangle, a line, or a point. Now this isn't going to work, so let's keep your mind churning about why it's not. OK, so there we go. We've got a point, which makes sense. In all other cases, right, which is it's not greater than 50, 150, 250, it's not greater than any of these, we should see a point. So now, when I get to greater than 50, what do we get? A circle. Now I should get to greater than 150, I should have a rectangle. Or greater than 250, a line. So why are these not, why are, um, why am I not seeing a rectangle or a line? Why, why, why? This is sort of a key, key uh, distinction here. So um, one thing that's true about this is the, at the, as soon as any one of these evaluates to true, the program kicks out of the if statement and goes to the next lines of code that are below that if statement. As Soon as any one of these evaluates to true, it doesn't check the next one. So the order of these is very, very important. Only one of these sections of code can be executed, not more than one. If you want more than one to be executed, there's a different way of doing it, which I'll mention afterwards. But for a, con a conditional statement, this is one whole statement where if is joined with else if, else if, and else. Only one of these can be evaluated. So let's go back to here and look at this again. Let's think about if mouse x has the value of 275. Well, in our minds, what we want to happen is 275 is greater than 250, so we should see that line. But let's now, let's be the computer for a second and go through this logic. Mouse x is 275. Is 275 greater than 50? Yes, it's true. It is greater than 250. So an ellipse is drawn. And remember, as soon as the first thing evaluates to true, we kick out of that and go to the end. So none of these others are checked. So the order of this really matters. If I had just checked if it was greater than 250 first, then I would have found that one, right? So the order here really, really is really important. So in this, just in this particular scenario, the way that I've written this code, I need to check 250, then 150, then 50. And we can run this program. And we should see, first we're starting with a point, then we get a line, then we get a square, and I put these kind of close together, then a circle. So based on where the mouse is, a different shape is drawn. So this is a really sort of crucial piece of information as to how these uh, if statements work. <laughs> now, um, OK, so um, now, it is true, however, that I could also, I, I hesitate to do this, but I could write this uh, with it not being, without these else. So if I take out these else, but leave maybe, and I'm going to, the else ifs, I'm going to take out this one, just three separate if statements, let's look at what happens now. You know, try, think to yourself, like, what's going to happen here? So I'm going to run this. I've got a line. I've got a, I, now I see all three of those. So these now are not related to each other. They're just three distinct if statements on their own. So when the mouse is 275, it's greater than 250 and greater than 150 and greater than 50. So all of these occur. However, if I string them together with that else, right, then as soon as the first one is executed, the next one is not checked. So these are essentially the tools you have to work with, and it really depends what it is you want to implement. Uh, OK, so there's one other tool 
I'm looking at my watch. Um, almost to 10 minutes here, which is about the length I'm trying to keep these videos. There's one other tool that I want to add to this video, which is and and or. So let's look at this here. Another thing that you can add into a conditional statement is an and or an or. So imagine if you said something like this. If mouse x is greater than 50 and, now this isn't correct syntax, but I'm just going to write the word and here for a second, and mouse x is less than 100. I kind of, right, what does this mean? If this is the canvas and this is pixel 50 and this is pixel 100, <clears throat> what is, um, and mouse x, so when does this evaluate to true? Well, this evaluates to true anytime the mouse is greater than 50. This evaluates to true anytime the mouse is less than 100. Both of these together, the whole statement only evaluates to true if both of those are true, which is all the area in here. You can think of it as the intersection. So with an and, if you join two Boolean expressions with an and, they both have to evaluate to true in order for, um, in order for um, the, the, the code here, for the full statement to evaluate to true. Now, you could also have an or here. If you put an or here, only one of these needs to evaluate to true in order for this whole, um, in order for uh, the, this code to evaluate, this, this, this code to be executed for this to evaluate to true. So let's think about this. If mouse x is greater than 50 or it's less than 100, well guess what? <laughs> that's every number that's ever been invented or talked about ever in the history of the universe of numbers, right? Because try to come up with a number that's either greater than 50 or less than 100. Every number. 2 is less than 100, 57 is greater than 50, 171 is greater than 50. So, so this is kind of like not so much of a logical statement, but it makes a lot of sense with an and. Now, the one thing that I'll mention here is, even though I'm using the words and and or, this is not actually the syntax. So the syntax for writing an and into your code is two ampersands, and the syntax for writing an or into your code is two pipes. Pipe, pipe, ampersand, ampersand. So I want to go now and um, I'm going to go now and make two quick examples. I'm going to add an and to our mouse x example, and I'm going to add an or to our bouncing ball example, and you'll see how both of those work. Okay, so over here, what I would like to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm just going to make a rectangle which is at 300, 200, 100, 100. And I'm going to say if mouse x is greater than 200 and mouse x is less than 300. So look at this. If mouse x is greater than 200 and less than 300, let's see what that results in. Oops, I would, <laughs> sorry. I'm going to draw the rectangle always and I'm going to change the fill color uh, if this evaluates to true. Okay, so look at this. The mouse, it's, no, it's not greater than 200 right now. Or, okay, oops, how come, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. I wanted to be greater than 300 and less than 400. Sorry about that. My math was off. See, look, if the mouse is over the rectangle, it's turning purple, otherwise it's not. Now, of course, if I'm up here, also, you can see as long as it's in between this side of the rectangle and the other side of the rectangle, that fill is executed. So what I might say to you as an exercise is, can you add some more ands to check if mouse y is greater than the top and less than the bottom? And this would be the code for a rollover here. So one of the things you're going to see as we work with P5.js more and more and more is that a lot of the... Um, uh, is that we're going to eventually be able to get a lot of this stuff for free. Like we're in the browser, I'm working in the browser, there's rollovers, there's buttons, there's all sorts of things. But as you're starting to learn to program and just drawing shapes, kind of raw shapes, working with the pixels, getting your hands dirty with the pixels in the canvas, you might take some time, like try to program a rollover, try to program a button. That's actually something... I need a video about something, about checking if the mouse is pressed. Um, anyway, there's a bunch of other videos, there's a bunch of other content here that I realize I need to make. Um, so, um, 
But this can get you started. So try to make some rollovers. Can you put more than one on the screen? Can you get them to change different colors? Uh, try things like that. I want to look very quickly uh, at an or. Um, so I'm going to go back also to my uh, other example. And remember this example where the, the ball gets to the right and turns around and goes back. When am I doing that? I'm doing that if x is greater than width. So what I want to say now is if x gets to the right side, turn around. Or if it gets to the left side, turn around. So what's the left side? If the right side is greater than width, the left side is or if x is greater than 0. And by the way, what's another way I can take, right? When it gets to the right, I want speed to become negative 3. When it gets to the left, I want speed to become positive 3. So negative 3. Positive 3, negative 3, positive 3. What's a way you can change a number from positive to negative to positive to negative to positive to negative? Always just multiply it by negative 1. So if I take speed and set equal to itself times negative 1, what you will see here is speed is 3, and now speed is negative 3. And now oh, when it gets to the left side, oh, speed is positive 3. So now you have this circle that's just bouncing back and forth. So this is, again, something you might start to play with with this example further, top and bottom, changing size, changing color. Can you have more than one circle on the screen, which is a little bit tricky right now because we haven't used, um, we haven't looked at an array yet, which is a list of things. But, um, but that. So this kind of fills in some gaps. And in my mind, I've thought of a lot of other gaps with uh, conditional logic that hopefully is uh, helping you here. OK, uh, I'm going to stop this video. And I'm, I might make one more. I thought of a couple other things that I wanted to mention about conditional logic. Uh, and then I also need to make some uh, videos about loops. OK. Oops, stop. <laughs>